going. And it's recording now. Cool. So good afternoon, everyone. We're going to give us 5.30 p.m. on my phone or uh, going to give us another couple of minutes as some people is joining. Seems like a, a, a lot of attendees are uh, joining the last minute. Sandro is already live. If you want, you can say hi, Sandro. Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. And we also have Craig and Colin uh, together with us. Come on, guys, don't be shy. You can Good say hi, everyone. too. How are you? Hey, everyone. Cool. So in another couple of minutes, we're going to start at, uh, and we know the drill. We're going to talk about what is the meeting for this uh, uh, month, talking a little bit about what is the uh, ACSUG, then uh, uh, have the legend of the month, and pass <laughs> it on to Sandro. So I know that it's like 6.30 a.m. Uh, on your side, Sandro. How's the weather there? Uh, well, well, it's night, <laughs> uh -huh. but it's a good weather. Uh, probably 30 degrees, some kind of uh, expecting for today. Now it's 30, like 3 0. 3 0. But Man, that's four, the age since I, I saw that. We are on what, the 14? 14? We're on 12 degrees on a day that was actually sunny because of that was really cold. And mm -hmm. yesterday and before yesterday was miserably uh, 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 rainy. But we need the rain. Now, we have a couple of weeks uh, in, in this situation. Nowadays, it's decent. Uh, expecting good weather today. OK, right. So. I'll start. OK, it's 5.32. Just send my uh, uh, my face there. So. Let me make sure that in the right place. Oh. Here. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, uh, let's start the ACSUG of <coughs> June to 2020. So as usual, a little bit about us. So we are well over 300 members today. Right, the, the user group is the organizers of the Global Integration Bootcamp since its inception here on, in New Zealand. Uh, the leadership group in, uh, uh, for ACSUG is, uh, apart from me, Craig Hayden, Colin Gigraf, uh, Mike Howell and Alessandro Mora. So Mike and, and Alessandro couldn't join it uh, so far. And if you wanted to help, if you wanted to volunteer, you can volunteer for a talk. Right, you can suggest topics that uh, you're interested, so we can try to hunt some uh, uh, people to talk about that. Or if you want, you can raise your hand to help with the organization. Uh, you should be able to follow us on Twitter on at SASUGNZ. And later on, I'm also going to put our new uh, YouTube channel. All of those presentations are being recorded. And we're starting to create a nice playlist of all the, the presentations there. What is today's show about? So today we're going to have Logic Apps, Best Practice Tips and Trick with the one and only Sandro Pereira, right? <laughs> Everyone knows uh, 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 Sandro has been working with Beach Talk for any size of uh, 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 time. I can't remember how many times his blogs uh, uh, and having discussion with him on Twitter and other places save my bacon. And I'm pretty sure that it's the same with you guys. So he's going to make a, 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 his own introduction, but I'm pretty sure there is someone that doesn't need introductions. We've been talking about AS, ACSUG legends, the things that happens for the first time or things that is strange since uh, uh, Craig missed his very first uh, uh, session since the beginning of uh, our times. So the legend of today is that this is the first time that Sandro Pereira is in New Zealand, even if it's just Indeed. visually, and it's 6.30 a.m. on his side. I think he's uh, uh, probably like me uh, uh, needing of a bit of coffee. So keep up with him and let's uh, uh, start. So Sandro, if you want, you can uh, uh, 
share your screen. Thank you, Wagner. Now let me share my screen. And for now, I'm going to put your face up. Are you seeing my screen? Um, almost there. Should be able to see both of them now. And it's all yours, man. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Wagner already spoke a little about me. I am the head of integration at Devscope. Uh, you may know me for um, my work in BizTalk side. Uh, I'm not only a, a BizTalk guy, I'm an integration guy. Uh, my team and I do a lot of BizTalk and, uh, and the Azure integration. And um, well, you have my, I don't want to speak too much about me. You have my LinkedIn here, my Twitter account, blog. Uh, if you want uh, any help or you have any comments, just ping me. I will always try to, to, to respond the fast I can. <laughs> okay. So just be noticed, this is a house full of kids. They are luckily at sleep here because it's 16.30 a.m. Uh, but at any moment, they can wake up, enter in the room and make some noise, okay? So uh, my talk about today is not, not about this talk. Maybe another time I will join uh, again on this user group to have a this talk talk. Today is about Logic App. And my this session was um, inspired by this uh, diagnosis uh, TV show that is on, on Netflix. Uh, this is about Lisa Sanders. That that's the the doctor that uh, was a consultant uh, of Doctor House. She's kind of the doctor, the real Doctor House, and she take cases and try to and diagnose these cases with the help of the community. Uh, and I was inspired to do the same about Logic Apps. So they are very easy to implement. Uh, they seem to work fine uh, uh, at uh, most of the time, you know, but do they really uh, are okay? Uh, do do they, uh, they, are they well implemented? Uh, what may be wrong with your logic apps? That was the focus of my session uh, to have these uh, first 10 uh, best practices or tips and tricks. Okay. And the first one is about naming convention. It has to be naming convention. Okay. Um, you should use uh, a naming convention of, uh, and I'm talking about the name of your logic apps in these cases. Okay, you should use uh, a name that can describe uh, easily what your logic app is doing. Okay, it improves his uh, readability uh, in your team and your in your clients and also transfer some knowledge, okay? Uh, so, in some examples that I have in my previous uh, uh, testing environment in POX, um, you may see that normally put some, some, some name, easy name. Uh, you may know what they are doing uh, at the moment because you are doing it, okay? Like email them, okay? Should be some kind of them with email. Check hey in logic app. I, I don't I don't know what I did there <laughs> actually. Uh, so you lose these these quick names or fast names, but uh, uh, after a while you stop uh, by the, by looking to the name, stop uh, looking or knowing what what they are doing. So Kind of, if I do a, an analysis to my to these names, I may see that only one is good enough. Pox send HTML email. Okay, I'm I know that I'm trying to send an email, uh, an HTML email uh, on a, on the Logic app. The rest of them, some of them are really bad. 
uh, others need uh, a little improvement. So you may use a naming convention that can easily describe what you are doing. No? For example, POC, uh, test, uh, proof of concept, uh, access, accessing last uh, element of an XML uh, array on the logic app. So I know that I'm doing some testing there, uh, proof of concept, uh, doing some kind, kind of stuff. Normally, like project name associated, uh, some short description of what your, your logic app is, is supposed to be doing. And some in some cases, like uh, its production, its dev environment, uh, uh, or, or what is your, your environment that you are using. Again, this is not a rule. This is just a naming convention that you should apply uh, on your uh, company or on, on, your, on your projects. Um, this way, they will be more readable. You know what they are doing. And even people that came and joined the, uh, the client or the team, uh, they may uh, easily find out uh, the logic apps that they are um, trying to, to get and see if you are failing or not. Okay. Um, this is one uh, best practice. It doesn't need to be this naming convention. You just need to apply a good naming convention and follow this naming convention in your, in your, in your clients. Um, the, the bad, uh, the bad uh, um, thing here is that we cannot easily change the name on the, uh, on the, of the, our logic app on the Azure portal, okay? Uh, it, it has no uh, option to rename the logic app. Uh, the only uh, alternative that you can do is clone it and and uh, and uh, and delete the previous one. Of course, in this case, you lose the history. Um, this is one approach that you can use if you are using directly the portal. If you are doing DevOps or other stuff like that. It's just a, a simple deployment again, but again, you lose the, the, the historic uh, of your executions, but it's the only option. Okay? Now, continuing in the naming convention, uh, you should also use a, a good naming convention on your actions, okay? Uh, for the same reasons, it can be better described what each action is trying to do, it improves readability in your teams, transfer knowledge, and so on and so forth. Uh, and again, if, if, if you are like me, a BizTalk guy that came with all this experience in, in uh, BizTalk and, uh, and uh, on permis, it's like you have an orchestration with shape one, shape two, send one, send two. You, you shouldn't do that, okay? Uh, you should create a good uh, naming convention for each action. Uh, and if you see uh, as a default in this uh, in this screen, you see that okay when a HTML request is received, it's what it is. I we don't know which kind of request uh, initialize variable which variable, a condition, which condition are you doing, no? Uh, set variable and so on and so forth. Um, if in this case you are looking to this kind of uh, logic app, you need to go one by one inside each action and see what they are really doing, okay? So if I can uh, suggest you may use some kind like this, no? Initialize the name of the variable is gml email body variable initialize the set description variable okay you are putting the name of the variable there and on the condition try to do uh, uh, a good description check if i receive an array or an object of a general notification so i have a decent uh, description there it's a good name of course, the, the, the true and, uh, and false uh, branch, we cannot rename it. Uh, 
as 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 like the the trigger when a HTML request is received, we cannot rename it unfortunately in the in the logic app. They are default names. Um, but the rest convert set code to description. You know, just give a decent uh, description, uh, a different name to to each action. It will help you read and understand what the logic app is trying to do. Uh, one one uh, uh, inconvenient is that uh, if your actions are dependencies, in this case, for example, um, if uh, I take the example the the convert step code to description that I will use the output in the in the in the in action that are um, uh, down, um, then I may I may face a, a issue um, because normally it was uh, until recently it was not uh, it was not uh, possible. Nowadays, actually, it is you can uh, rename um, actions with dependencies, but you need to be uh, careful because there are some uh, little bugs there. But normally what we saw in the, um, until like one month ago is like if you have a, a dependency, you cannot rename it. In this case, I cannot rename parson JSON because I was using these the 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 output of this part JSON on the add row to a data set. So again, today it's possible, but with some uh, you need to be careful using this rename option. It doesn't work 100% uh, well. So the only way, guarantee way, for you to rename uh, uh, an action that has dependencies is go to the uh, code view and just find and replace. In this case, uh, uh, you are seeing that the name of the action is parse space JSON. On the code view is parse underscore JSON. So you just need to uh, uh, all the all the spaces uh, characters needs to be replaced as an underscore character. Uh, so you just need to find parse JSON and rename parse JSON, rename it, and then you be able to um, easily and 100% sure that without any problems you rename an action that has dependencies, of course. The the next tip is about adding comments. OK, uh, it's 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 like uh, so I, I, I'm a business guy. I was uh, previous uh, C sharp in the beginning and in all my code, I do some comments. OK, it's the best practice. So why don't you do the same in, in, in the logic app side? Uh, for example, um, the the trigger, uh, I told the trigger, you cannot rename it. Uh, it's the default name. When a HTML request you receive, we cannot change that, unfortunately. So what we can do is just add a comment uh, and say, this action is to receive a JSON with the evaluation form OCR metadata from a smart documenter tool. Um, so in this case, if I'm going there to this logic app, I know that I'm receiving a, a HTML request, but now I know who is the sender and what's, uh, what kind of uh, document are we expecting to receive there, okay? And the same, uh, initialize HTML email body. Why not saying why uh, why we are creating this variable and why is being using? Okay, so in this case, uh, you may know uh, that uh, uh, HTML uh, so the send uh, con email connector has now an action V two, and I'm talking about Outlook. 
So in the in the previous action, the V1, we can put HTML directly on the body and it will work uh, as an HTML, HTML uh, email if we specify the, 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 the property is HTML true. So that that kind of um, experience or, or a feature will change on, on this action V2. And now you cannot put directly the HTML uh, syntax on, on the body. So you need to use a, a variable with the, this kind of syntax and put uh, the variable on the body uh, of, the, of, the, of the send email action v2 just to have an html email body so it's kind of another trick uh, part of this so you may you may um, specify a comment say why you are using this kind of variable okay and another uh, another uh, good example about the uh, comment is you know that when you put a condition or uh, some kind of condition or expression uh, on your logic apps. In this case, I'm doing, uh, you see this string and dots, simple as that. If you want to know what kind of condition you have inside there, you just need to press that string uh, in the kind of uh, pink, uh, it open uh, an expression uh, shape that is kind of small. Uh, you cannot scale uh, or maximize. You have to uh, uh, scroll uh, or just easy copy and paste to a notepad just to for you to read better this expression. So what what I normally do is I take this expression and I put in the comment. Uh, on the comment. Now I know that in this condition, I'm I'm checking if my my body starts with um, I don't know the term in in English. That kind of character. Okay. Square bracket. Square bracket. Thank you. So uh, is now more readable. Okay. It's a good example of uh, of putting a comment on a condition. Uh, and again, another kind of example is is a scopes. Uh, if you create a scope, you may say this section is uh, is about doing A, B, or C option. Okay, in this case, I'm reading for a keyboard and database, so I'm reading um, parameters for later on be be executed uh, on on the future actions of the logic app. So. You may have some comments there just to know that this kind of actions is you are supposed to do this kind of actions or or or, or scope, uh, and then um, you don't need to go one by one. You know that that block of actions you do is doing this kind of actions. Okay, so it put your your logic app more readable. Uh, it will help uh, passing knowledge good documentation, it's, it's self-documentation. So, um, I spoke about scopes, let's do more uh, drill down in scopes. What are uh, scopes and where I can use uh, scopes, okay? Uh, it's kind of uh, a region. You know? Uh, if you are in, in, in a C-sharp world, you put some regions. It, can, it will collapse a certain amount of code. Um, this is the same uh, in, in the logic app. So one feature of the scope, it's a region. It's doing uh, uh, just collapse uh, the, the, the shapes so you can easier read because it can scale. It's like an, an orchestration. It can get bigger. So you you, you use scopes to, to collapse uh, part of the logic apps. That's one uh, mission of the scope. Another is a try catch, finally. So uh, in the logic app, 
you see the try, the, the catch, and finally, it can be try catch only, no? It's the same also for uh, scope. You can, if you want to implement the try catch, finally, you need to use scopes, okay? Uh, one scope is the try, another scope is the catch, and another scope is the finally. So the scope is multi-task, okay? It, it depends how you're using, it may have certain functionalities or not. It can be a region or it, it's always kind of region, but it can also be a try catch finally. And uh, um, we spoke the, 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 the try, uh, so uh, next tip is about error handling and follow this line of thinking. So again, you create a region, you, uh, a, re uh, uh, a scope, sorry, you put all the actions there and, and create the second scope to, uh, to work as a catch. So to work as a catch, you need to go to the properties of that scope and specify the run after options. So you need to go to run the the run after uh, the uh, how it's called config run after settings uh, and 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 um, and specify that the catch scope only be only be executed if the previous scope the try scope fails or as a timeout. Okay. So if it fail, if if it fails or, or do a timeout, then you do the try, the the catch uh, actions. And again, on the bottom, you should create a new scope, and again you go to run after uh, settings and say that this will be ex executed in all situations after the the catch scope. If it's success, if it's failing or skip it, and it's, it will be skipped if the if there is no exception and the try scope runs successful, so it, the the catch will be skipped, but you still need to execute the final scope. So in all this, it's just setting up all these conditions, and these three combinations do the uh, the mission of a try catch. Uh, finally scope okay that was the picture that I saw uh, below uh, in the beginning but as as a C sharp no you don't need to to implement uh, try catch to to raise an error so each line if, if it fails do just raise an error um, so we don't we need scopes to do a try catch finally but if you want to do like try of each line if it fails just ignore it uh, you don't need any scope because all of these actions as the run after uh, options so for example um, by default if you check the the, uh, the run after the, the 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 action below will be only executed if the the above run successful okay that's the default uh, of each action that you put in your logic app uh, and the same on the on the on the on the try uh, the, the the inside the scopes but we can play uh, around with these, okay? Uh, for example, I can I can uh, set up the one um, one uh, action below saying, okay, execute the same even the, the the above one fails. So that is kind of try and do nothing. So if it failed the, the that action, just ignore it and continue the rest. Sometimes, I don't know, by now some real good case to do that, but it's possible, okay? So in each line we can do like a try 
and, 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 and ignore it. So you should learn for, from failures on your logic app executions, okay? Uh, as a C sharp code, we try normally to defensive code, no? Uh, for example, I took the example of uh, trying to connect to a SQL server using uh, uh, the the um, using the using capabilities inside C sharp, no? So and I'm checking also if if there is data to be read, I will read the data, no? Uh, so if it fails, I'm okay with it. If if it goes to right to read the, the select and it doesn't return nothing, I'm okay with it. My code doesn't really break, okay? So why not doing the same with logic apps, okay? Normally, and I see this this uh, happening a lot. Is like we are going to do uh, select on a SQL database, or we are going to execute a, a start procedure on the, on a database, or other systems. Okay, and we take as granted they will return some values. Okay, so it's like okay, give me. The, the the result of this uh, select condition and then I'm go doing, going to do a, a for each condition or uh, going to any element just connecting to a different uh, action and sometimes it doesn't re result nothing and it it will give an error saying because even with with the with the with the SQL, sometimes we have this kind of result set empty, or we have the result set with table empty. That is kind of different. If you receive the table empty, if you are trying to do a, a forage, it will result. It will not do nothing. But if if you get the result set empty, and you start to do a forage, that may be failing. And that was the case that we see in this run history. And I spoke with my one of my team members and, and told why is failing. Well, it's normal. Um, it doesn't. It, it didn't resolve uh, return any any data from the database. And I told him, man, I mean, this the it, it cannot happen. Failing is some. It's it has to be an issue that some people need to take this in consideration and look for it. If it's normal, it cannot be a failure. It has to be controlled, okay? And this is me speaking about more than four, 14 years of integration. My flow cannot fail, okay? If it's normal, it has to be controlled. It has to be uh, executed as a successful or terminated, okay? But it, it cannot be failure. So we need to learn about this failure and fix that. Do some kind of defensive uh, code inside your, in your logic apps. If I'm trying to connect to the system and expect results, I need to validate if there is a result, okay? It cannot be break because it doesn't, didn't return a result. Um, and so, Again, if I'm trying to go to a database, receive some metadata from the database, I may need to validate if there is data to be uh, consumed. Um, and uh, these two expressions is some kind fixing uh, uh, the previous problem. So uh, if I receive the table empty or the result set empty, I'm just trying to uh, uh, first go to the first body of the result set and see if that is one of the expect elements there. No? And uh, in the other situation, I'm just seeing that if there is uh, uh, the table there. So this is just an example. This is the expression uh, that I'm using and uh, even I put some comments there just to explain what I'm kind of using it.
and uh, expressions and the nightmare of using expressions inside logic app. Well, if you are annoying that uh, expression shapes inside BStock is uh, not a very good experience, expression uh, using expressions in logic app is way, way worse than that. Uh, so if you want to use the expressions and they are awesome, you know, uh, it's you, you, you should use it because they are really important in different situations. But the experience experience of using it is a nightmare. So you see that there is body dots. And if I click there, there is this small box as an expression. OK, you only you see only the name of the of the, of the, exp the, the, the action that I'm trying to use. The rest you cannot read it. Okay? Normally what I'm doing is just copying this to notepad. And and um, to be real, no? So this inside coma and with the, with the underscore is the name of your uh, action that you are using. Then you have the exclamation points to enter the, the body of the, of the message. And then you navigate result set tables, uh, first element of the table, and I'm just trying to see if, if there is error uh, or getting, in this case, the first expression is getting the error description. Um, so you, you kind of use it, this expression to avoid having the parse uh, JSON to generate generate tokens uh, everywhere. You know? Or you, you can uh, simply using these uh, expressions. Uh, here in the second, I'm just concatenate um, one uh, mathematic operation and a string. You know? And um, and the last one this is kind of crazy. It's I'm doing a sum of I guess four uh, integers and do the average. Uh, you see this kind of ab 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 because again this expression has some limitations. For example, adding. It only accepts two values. So if I'm adding four, I need to concatenate this kind of in, in multiple uh, uh, add operations that add two. And it's kind of difficult to read. So sometimes uh, I do, uh, it's in the next slide. So kind of, if you don't know the first uh, and this comma with underscore, I told you is the name of the, of the action. Uh, names are separate with uh, space are separate with underscore. I already told that. So what I normally do uh, in my actions, in my expressions, is I, I'm putting in the in, um, in the notepad. I event them. So if you see that I'm adding two of them, combining with add two of them, and divide by four. So it's easy to read. Then I just remove all the lines and put in 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 a single one to pass to this expression. There is no good uh, good experience of using this way. You can read it better if you want to understand what you are using. So we're almost in the end and. Uh, the previous one was uh, simple and the most basic um, best practices and, and tricks that you can have uh, and implement using your logic apps. Now about connectors and that, that uh, here things are getting more serious and more annoying. Um, Connectors, API connections, and why we need to control it, and why is a disaster. You may add duplicate connections. It's not bad. You just need to know why, and, and 
and if you are well, uh, you, you are using it for the right approach because we normally duplicate connections for um, avoiding reaching the thresholds of the APIs. No, so in this case, you add multiple connectors uh, and they have their own thresholds. So if you do too much con uh, calls to, for example, teams, you may exhaust your uh, amount of calls that you can do in a certain period of time. So in this case, we normally use um, uh, duplicate connectors doing the same of the same stuff just to avoid this kind of uh, thresholds and use connection that way worse. Uh, so we may have some lot of uh, trash there and 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 if you are so if you are a developer, you don't care. <laughs> it's like a pistol. Well, we don't care. The administrator will deal with it. In this case, if you are a developer in your, in your logic app world, in the Azure world, you don't care. But who, the guy that is controlling, administrating the Azure uh, stuff, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's not a good uh, position. I, I don't want to be in this position. Who is using the connectors? You don't know. Simply, you, you cannot easily know that. OK, um, so we need to be careful about uh, who is using what kind of connectors that we have. And if you see this screenshot is it's my connectors. No, first of all, it doesn't have a good naming convention on the portal. You may you may use strategies to have better namings. But by default, if you are using the portal, creating everything on the portal, these are the names of your API connections. Uh, Power BI, Power BI 1, Power BI 1, SQL, SQL, SQL 1, SQL 2, SQL 3, Teams, Teams 1. That's the experience. And if you enter in one of them, it's still the experience. You don't really know why you are using, who is using it, nothing, okay? So to minimize this, and this is not the best situation or the best strategy, you can call it whatever, but it's again, it's just to minimize that, you may use some tags specifying what's the project, what's the logic app, and what's the environment that you are using, okay? If you are sharing, so if you are, if you are, if you are resource group for production, then you know that the uh, the the environment is production. If you are sharing, well, you don't know that. Uh, so it depends also on your Azure strategies. I will advise you well, at least different resource group for production, dev, and so on and so forth. But again, you should. You can create some kind of uh, tags to um, to to add some some documentation about who is using this kind of um, connect uh, connections because from the API connection uh, section on the portal you you cannot know you may know if you go by each logic app. And each logic you enter in inside the logic app inside okay, you select the logic app and you go to to the connectors, then there will be a list of name of the connections uh, that you are API connection that you are using. But you need to go one by one. OK, for example, if you are sharing a, co a connector or API, con API connection from the API, API connection page, you cannot know that. OK, and here it should be the easier way to, to know where it's being used. OK. And 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 the worst. So again, on this side, I don't I, I have all my API connections. On the on the if I enter the logic apps, I know that each logic app is using this and, and that connector. 
but I don't have an easy way, for example, to know which kind of connection are orphans. I'm not using it. It's it's deprecated. No one deleted from there. Even if you are creating um, creating a connection from a logic app designer, if you fail, for example, the credentials, let's say that you are using the SQL uh, API connection. You are trying to connect to a SQL database. You fail enter the the some some kind of property, name of the database, name of uh, username and password. It will create, it will give an error, but it will create the SQL connector. Okay, you will need to uh, 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 recreate again. So fixing the properties, you put a different password, but you mistake again. It will create another one saying SQL one. In the, in the third tentative, you actually succeed. You get with SQL, SQL one and SQL two connectors on on this API connection list. Two of them are orphans. They are not really uh, uh, configured to work, but you still have this kind of noise there. All the, this trash stays there. So how do you know that is orphan uh, uh, API connectors? There is no simple way. There is no direct way from the the, the portal to know that. Um, it, uh, using this kind of co connections, naming conventions <clears throat> and so on is one of the biggest pains I know using the and 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 uh, creating and maintaining a logic app environment. No. So, for example, uh, Michael Stephenson did a, an awesome uh, PowerShell script to find a list of orphan connectors. You just go there, uh, put a subscription, resource group, blah, 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 just execute. It will give a list of all connectors that you should delete from your uh, resource that are not being used. Okay. And some kind of these uh, uh, tasks you need to uh, to do with PowerShell because there is no easy way. And uh, sometimes again fixing uh, connectors. No, again be careful because every time that you fix a connection, if you put uh, the stuff wrong, it will probably create a new connector in your in your um, in your resource group. But for example, sometimes I go to my subscription and there is this kind of situation that my connection was gone. I need to fix that. Uh, if I click the, the Power BI connector, it will give me this screen. A list of uh, um, already created API connections using the Power BI disable, okay, and there is the add new when cancel. There is no kind of fixing directly, and actually fixing is is is, in, is on this exclamation uh, dot. No, we need to click 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 there to fix that. I think this kind of use this kind of usability is not the best option, but it is what it is. And after you click that, you may enter the, the again, your credentials. Otherwise, you just create add new and create more noise to your resource group because then you have like two API connections disabled, not being used because they are invalid. And you are just creating more and more and more API connections. OK, so if you want to fix that from the the portal, you may go to the API connections page and fix from there is a, a better user experience. If you are using the design, you just click the exclamation point. And that's it for my set of uh, best practices and tips. My first one I may do more advanced tips in the future. I hope you like it and do you have any questions? Yeah, we've got a list of questions for you.
do you use the JavaScript action to avoid complicated expressions? Well, JavaScript, uh, you need the uh, integration account, I guess. Yes, that's, and, that's correct. And I don't want to spend money for easy stuff, no? Uh, integration account is expensive, and if I'm using only for that reason, no, it will, it will not happen. One trick that I heard that uh, people talking about is that it requires an, an integration account, but even the free integration account that you have for developers is, is enough to enable that. So in the case, if you uh, need to use that, and you didn't use your your free enterprise integration account yet, it might be a way to, to kind of a work around. Can you, are you, I know that you can, but uh, it's more or less, should you use it or is kind of legal to use a developer in production? Um, I think as in that case, we are the, uh, the free integration account does, doesn't have SLA, Right, just okay. like the dev integration or, or API management is not illegal. It's just that you might not have the same kind of support that would sure. have on on a basic or a, a standard integration account. But again, if using that just for the JavaScript, then it might be a way to to deal with. I I'm with you. I would prefer not to have be forced to to use a workaround to use JavaScript. Definitely. And it's something that we've been like at the uh, uh, back I, with, with product group for a long time. I will probably use uh, as a function. <laughs> yeah, because that's <laughs> the other way to do it, right? And it's yeah. uh, depending on, on your volume is going to be free as well. Yeah, but again, if, if you are saying that I'm just uh, sum four values and divide by four, yeah, I'm, I'm even uh, using uh, as a function, it will take more it's time open. than using an expression inside because it's, it's the engine itself of Logic App that is doing that. It's not an HTTP request to an endpoint to receive an operation, so it will take more time. If, if that is not really important, yeah you have some options. Yeah. I would be only using functions if the thing is really, really complex. It's like yeah. in some cases we replace uh, the, uh, uh, very complex mappings from uh, uh, the stock word into a function or when you needed to do extra lookups and things like that. Or, or JSON to JSON mapping, yeah, also. Exactly. Uh, and anything but that again. requires a little looping. Mm -hmm. Also move to a function. Yeah, yeah, but using the expression, it's you are using the engine of the logic app. It will be faster than using integration account or as a function for sure. Yeah. yeah. Next so question. probably if you come, if a, a rules would be use the the expressions as much as you can. Then yeah. if it's really really the uh. uh too hard to support, then go to functions and uh, uh, expressions. I would say in that order, just because functions is fully supported, while the integration account, unless you already have integration account for something else, is more like a workaround. Uh, I know that the team is working in new design, so I, I don't know if this expression will have a better look and feel and experience in the future, but Hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you could see my my screen or, or me, I would be with double both uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Next cool. question from one of our attendees: On top of naming conventions, do you use tags for your logic apps? If so, any recommendations? Well, I use some tags from my logic app. Um, I'm using tags for project name. Uh, environment and anything else that the client uh, wants 
for finding this stuff. It's not like I don't have any rule. I don't I don't uh, really have this kind of I need to do this or everything in all the case I need to do this and that. It's about the client and how the client is working. Uh, so I need to adapt a little on the client, also suggesting the client some stuff. But for example, the project name, uh, I, I'm putting the project name uh, because normally we have a lot of project in different kind of pro like like saying the um, a bestock application. No, you bind some stuff to a bestock application. You deploy to a bestock application. Uh, I'm trying to do the same kind of stuff. I know sometimes you use resource groups, but sometimes you, the client only has one resource group, uh, and we can we can we cannot force the client uh, to do what we want. We need sometimes to adapt what they they want or they think is the best to manage their other subscriptions. No, so. Some tags that I put in is uh, project name, uh, some environment is production, not production, and what else you find useful to have and to 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 filter. No. Just just one note here from for for the tagging. So for for ASP, we have like the, we have just like one subscription for the digital department and we have like uh, several other subscriptions for each department so one thing we do is like to tag by project by squad name and have some uh, probably con contact details so we are doing mostly that because of billing we, we want to know how much each team is expanding on that particular subscription so that's the approach we are Take like for and this is kind of a governance, right? To to indeed have of information. Indeed, it has to be. Uh, you have to have focus on your client and the needs of them, and uh, and to fulfill that uh, with tags. The other the other point on on tags as well is that in some cases you're going to have that as part of the governance. Next question. Yeah. Dealing with repeated patterns in logic apps is painful. Do you have any tricks to address these? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. Dealing with repeated patterns in logic apps is painful. Do you have any tricks to address these? <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, it's, it's a long talk about that. It depends on the on the on on what we're trying to achieve and what patterns you are trying to implement. Um, it, 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 it's a long long talk. May have long tips, another set of tips to do that. But uh, most uh, of the patterns probably you should use service bus uh, to implement them. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a, uh, the other way to, to read that question is if you have things that are repeated and you have to reuse across multiple patterns or uh, multiple logic apps, then that would be the case of creating its well, own logic apps for that, right? So the same way that if you have code that is repeated across, uh, uh, across multiple items, refactor that to be its own uh, uh, little component and reuse that component or that class everywhere. Think it's about the same that, thing as logic apps. It's not that simple, okay? <laughs> it's not that simple. Uh, it it it's that simple in in bistalk world, no? It's not that simple in logic app world, and uh, and the reason of that is uh, you need to be careful on doing that, because again, each uh, if you are using, let's say, I want a notification, and my notifications are by teams. OK, uh, so you create a logic app uh, that receives kind of a message that it's a general notification that we create like a canonical hmm. message uh, for notification. And basically 
let's say you put this message on the service bus and that kind of logic app is looking to that service bus and, and just notify the team channel. It, if you are using for all of them, you may reach a threshold of Teams notification. Okay, so because you are using one connected, one logic app to do all, all your uh, uh, notifications. So sometimes, and again, there are also some um, kind of strategies to avoid that. It's like in, instead in, on that generic uh, uh, logic app, instead of you having one, one uh, actions to notify, you may create like a round. Round robin. Uh, yeah, round robin, that's the word. Instead of uh, having one, you put like five or six, and you are doing just kind of random sending, okay, I'm using this connector, this connector, that connector, just to avoid um, avoid uh, reaching a threshold of API calls. So you need to be very careful about creating generic stuff, otherwise you reach thresholds and it, it, will, it will fail. I already reached uh, a team specification. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like okay. we might have another really good. There is actually good, a, uh, it's a really good tip on that one. Think about yeah. the thresholds. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just duplicating the same orchestration, just to be easier and and have this kind of separation. Okay. Uh, not tied to anything but decouple. Uh, sometimes it's a good approach. Again, there are inconvenience and, and advantage because if I change something, I need to change in all of them. But I can work with that with DevOps also. Yeah. So I have one implementation and one I deploy. I deploy in multiple names uh, using different configurations. That's a kind of strategy that you can use it. Uh, so it's not nothing in Azure and Logic App is a simple question and a simple response. Okay, you nothing need to be on integration is a simple question and a simple response. <laughs> yeah, but again, if uh, you 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 learn this by by mistakes, and you, mm -hmm. if you are coming from Bistol cool like me you are used to certain stuff. So we can we can easily implement this kind of stuff, uh, like having one generic orchestration and do all the stuff. But it's not the same as in Logic App. We may think first, uh, okay, I will use this Logic App, it's generic, boom, simple. I using this, all these kind of patterns that I use in the, in the, in the on-premise world and it will fail at some point. Uh, so again, you need to use it wisely. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, okay. Next one. Yeah, last question that we've got. What do you use to handle business rules as Logic Apps does not have a BRE to help with that? It doesn't have, uh, you don't expect to have it soon. Uh, if you want, business rules, you need to implement them. Just, and I, again, I'm just saying this from my head without thinking because I never implement business rules in Logic App. Unfortunately, I didn't have this, this requirement yet, but I will probably use SQL, uh, SQL database and other functions. Mm -hmm. There is no option, okay? There is, that is not, it doesn't ex exist this capability in, 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 in Azure itself, okay? So you need to, to implement that and depending what kind of business rules you are implementing, because business rules, you may know that you can go to the schemas, to the database, to the objects. If you are thinking about business rules in Bistle, it's kind of can be easy or complex. Um, but there is there, there isn't this kind of options. That's awesome. Um, do we have any other questions? 
two new things here. OK, so there is one more for us to, to the uh, uh, complete here. The, how do you manage calling all the logic apps nested between environments? Well, I try to avoid that. First of all, uh, I really try to avoid that situation, but different nested nested uh, logic apps in yeah, different I think it's, environments. I, I think what, oh. he, what he's trying to talk about here is you having uh, uh, logic apps and they are nested, but then uh, uh, how do you manage that between environments? Right, I think uh, the, the way that I usually would be doing that would be instead of actually having a nested logic apps, I would better uh, expose that through API management because then I would have an endpoint that was easy, easily replaceable. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think and I was getting the same options. So mm -hmm. if, if you are nested and different environments for security wise and, and, and maintenance wise, it's exposing with API management and control it that way. Because then we, you, as you told, you can replace it, uh, redirect to other stuff without affecting nothing. Yes. Otherwise, you have to have like a, a new deployment uh, to fix that. And the the other point on that one is usually the, uh, when you say API management, people's like shouting and and running through the roof because of the cost. But we have to remember that today, now we have the, the consumption plan that even has a free allowance, so it's starting to get much closer to the things like uh, uh, like functions and the proper logic apps. Now that we have a consumption yes. plan. Okay, it depends also in your volume. You can start smaller and then it scale. That's beautiful of of uh, Azure. You no, know, you can get bigger easily. Uh, and at some point, if you grow, 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 you can go to eyes. You no, know? yeah, you can you can scale everything as uh, as you need. Yeah, so uh, I know that, uh, for example, in my client, and we are using mainly Bistol, uh, but we are in the hybrid situation and we use Bistol binding to logic apps and so on. Um, and we have also small stuff in, in the logic app side uh, without passing with Bistol, but um, we just create a, a API management small tier, the basic one, and we start doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Even functions, we create a small one to, to do stuff. We don't have kind of big stuff because we are not really using it. Um, we had a project that uh, we had to re-engineer re everything because it was about service bus and events, and we are trying to use event apps that cost us 20k per year. Uh, just to pass like um, 10 messages per day. It, it will not work finance finance way, no? It's it's too expensive for, for consuming 10 messages a day. And we 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 just remove even terms. We start with the service was uh, basic. So we, we pass from the service was enterprise even terms. Uh, to to service was basic, we engineer the, the 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 logic apps to work in a different way because we are not using events anymore. We are pulling. Uh, at the end of the day, we we pass from 20k per year to 64 years per year, and it works the same. So again, you need to sync uh, in your in your goals and think financial a financial way also and, uh, and 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 get bigger if you need 
Yeah, and uh, one thing that you're saying that is quite important, and uh, I used to say every time that I do introduction of logic apps of anything on IIS, cost is a new design, uh, 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 a new design constraint, right? Before, yeah. when you're thinking be stock and everything, we were thinking about those uh, uh, marvelous patterns and stuff like that, but because you already invested like 7K on a bestock at the uh, server, you try to put everything there. Now we Which have to think wrong, about growing, growing smart, growing slow, and making sure that you do it just in time investment. Yeah, yeah, because if you, again, if you look into the requirements, uh, only the requirements, and if you don't have in any boundaries, you go for the everything, you know, you want to, Create a service versus, yeah, why not enterprise? Go for it. Why? Because I can use event them. Go for it. Uh, at the end of the day, when you deliver this to the client, they will say to you, ah, that's 20K per year. Uh, and you have developer environment, production environment, QA environment is not 20K, it's 60K. It's too expensive, no? Uh, so, you need to look to 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 the to the cost uh, also with the client. Um, you need to to think about performance also. Um, again, uh, if you if you think that VStalk is bad for low latency, which is not, you can actually turning very very fast. <laughs> okay, you just need to be really smart, and you just have good CPU and memory, you can put VStock respond in, in milliseconds. I remember VStock Fast and Furious uh, the, uh, presentation, man. I, I, yeah. I saw it live. So uh, you can, but try to put a logic app doing milliseconds. I challenge you to do that, okay? If you put a logic app running to 200 milliseconds, but a considerable one, no? Mm. Uh, I will be a happy guy. No? <laughs> uh, so you think you need to think about lots of stuff. Oh. So uh, um, you may need to skip logic app in some cases. You may need to go to Axel and functions mm -hmm. or just create an API uh, to do like proxy stuff. Um, because I still remember the first project that I went uh, and in the paper I was a happy, uh, I was so happy to be on that project. He has API management, he has BizTalk, he has integration account. It was everything. It was like I mean I need, I mean my Azure dream. And uh, uh, and and this was a, a a bank and we had to add 200 milliseconds response time so after a while and this was in the early beginnings now is way way better but we had to remove integration account just because it was slow we had to remove logic app because it was average six seconds to 12 200 milliseconds is a huge amount of difference, no? Uh, and uh, at the end, we had to, we didn't have like, and and, and express routes and so on and so forth. Uh, actually, you had, uh, we had express route, but uh, we, we, we end up creating API, uh, API app, uh, with the uh, express route binding and um, and the API management on front to achieve 200 milliseconds. So I had, you are, you I are had a similar experience on, on that one where a client uh, uh, in paper, everything was pointing to logic apps, but because of the volumes and the, the, the uh, number of transactions that we needed to do, we have to scale back on, on Azure functions. Yeah, well, Would, I, unfortunately, at that moment, we didn't have uh, Azure function was also in the beginning. So we didn't have like kind of 
what we have at the moment with as functions no uh, so now is really 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 powerful in some cases we we replace logic app with as functions no uh, which is kind of strange that we are going to the the old days that everything was code yeah. it is it's going to be really interesting to replay that discussion in six months time after the, all those changes that are coming on, on uh, soon with the logic apps running on, on the function runtime with the stateful versus stateless things what is going to change on those scenarios yeah it's probably Indeed. we should be scheduling you again for six months already man <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I need to try it uh, really, really well before I speak because I normally like speak about stuff that I'm really using it, not as a proof of concept. <laughs> okay, That's so I give you seven months. <laughs> yeah, we give yeah, you seven, seven months. months. <laughs> cool. Next. So, guys, Next it's talk already about this talk. Uh -huh. Cool. So it was already 6.46. We went over 50 minutes, but uh, uh, the discussion was so good that I didn't think that we should be stopping it. Uh, thank you very much, Sandro. It was an awesome presentation, and you see that the number of the, the questions. We usually don't have that many questions on our uh, uh, forums, right? It's like we have two, three, and then people that, uh, think oh, it's all good. Nice. We had a lot of questions there. That means that people was really pay attention and wanted to, to take a, a slice of your time. So will, thank you very much, I will, and I, I hope you enjoy. Be that in person, but next time. Next time. <laughs> next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So all good, and uh, uh, hopefully see you guys again in July. And that's it. Oh, thanks so much, Sandro. Thank, thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you, Sandro. All right.